Hi everybody, it's Ros from North Mayo Fine Art. Um, I've not been very active lately, what with one thing and another. Um, obviously having three children off for Christmas makes it quite difficult. Um, but want to wish you all a very happy new year and welcome to 2017. Now as you can see I am still working on the tractor, I actually haven't done very much for it for the last three weeks. Um, today I'm going to show you how I draw metal and I'm going to be working on this box at the front of the tractor today. Now before I actually start doing anything else what I want to do is just put some of the lines down because this is a logo and I can't actually quite make out what the logo says but I want to get some of the the darkest portions of the lines down before I start colouring around it because it's practically impossible to get get colours back to their original state once you've gone over them. So I'm just going to quickly whiz along. And I'm just filling in, just basically looking at my reference photo so and just filling in where the darkest sections are. Now, I got a, a couple of new tools for Christmas this year that I will be discussing in more detail. Um, and one of them is a pencil sharpener, which gives me this amazing, very fine, sharp point on my pencils. It's a fantastic tool. I don't know how I managed without it all this time. I will go into more detail about that, but I just want to get on with some colouring before we do anything else. Now, I would say that is about all of the, the dark I need to add. Now, I'm going to start just with the front panel of this box. And what I can see in my reference photo is that it's actually, it's not just black or grey. It has several other colours in it. And what I want to do is I want to add the lightest colours first. So I can see that down this side here there is some cream. So I'm going to add that first. Now what happens when you add a light colour before you add a dark colour is that it almost works as a resist. Once you've put the light colour down, the dark colour shouldn't actually adhere to it. What I've also noticed is if you do get any colour going over a light colour that you've already laid down, if you go over it very lightly with an eraser, I use my Tombow Mono Eraser. But if you go over it lightly with an eraser, if you do, do get any colour stuck over the light colour, it comes off really easily. So it's not a problem.
So I'm working around the front of this metal and I'm just adding cream. And what I also want to do is there's three very bright white areas. And the best way that I've found to actually keep an area very white is by pressing down with your white pencil. I'm using a poly polychromos pencil for this. I know I always say use a very light hand, but if you want to actually keep something very white, you need to push down with a certain amount of pressure. You're almost burnishing it into the paper. So there's my three white spots there. So I'm then going to take several shades of warm grey because it's not solid black. There are lots of different shades of colours within the metal. So I'm not going to use one solid colour for this. I'm going to use a variety of colours to achieve the look I'm going for. So I'm going to start off with a relatively light one, which is warm grey three. I'm going to start up at the top. And I am going to use light circular motions for this. Because I just want to get the base layer down. Now as you can see, when you get to the cream that I've already put on, it resists the grey. Can you see I'm going, I'm actually going over the cream there and it's resisting the grey, it's not allowing the grey onto the area where the cream or the white is. I'll just go over that top one there. Now because I'm using circular motions it doesn't actually matter which direction I'm moving on the paper. If I was doing straight lines I would have to keep working in the same direction because otherwise you'd be able to see how the lines differ. Keep going along. I've got in between here and underneath there. And as you can see, the grey is sticking to the areas that don't have colour on, but it's not sticking to the areas that do have colour. And I can go all the way down to the bottom of this area and it will not pick up the colour if there's already cream on. As you can see, it stops the colour right on the edge of the cream. Now I'm going to go over slightly harder this time. But I am going to be blending this out. Now, as you all know, any of you that's, that's watched previous videos, I absolutely adore my paper blending stumps. And, oh, sorry, my puppy has come to say hello. Um, as I was saying, I've always used my blending stumps. But a friend of mine actually told me... Um, before Christmas about a new tool that she uses and they're called silicone colour shapers and this is basically what they are. 
the silicone tools that you can use for a variety of different things. You can use it for working with clay, for sculpting with, but you can always also use them for blending. And I've done plenty of tests with them now. And they come in different fir firmnesses, if that's a word. And the ones I'm actually going to use today are size two. And I've got one soft one and one firm one. And I'm going to start off with my soft one. It's this white one here. And this is just a chisel ended one. I like the fact that it's actually got the solid, the end just there, because it means that I can work quite flat and just that end is actually going to be blending the pencil. But I can move in circular motions or I can move straight in a straight line. But they're really, really nice. As you can see, it's very softly blending the grey. Now I found that you don't have to be particularly gentle with these colour blenders. You can move around with a certain amount of, I wouldn't say force, but we don't have to be particularly careful with them. Now this one, because it's a soft one, it's very pliable and it moves around. Once I've gone over with this one, I'm going to go over with the firmer one to make sure that all the colour is full blended. So there's the soft one. Now I've got a slightly different one this time, which is this one. And this one's a firm one, so it's not as pliable as the first one, and it's also got a slightly different end to it. And I like this one as well because you've got the very small end there, and on the other side it's slightly deeper. Again, it's got the nice flat point, the nice flat end. Now, I, I like using the flat ends, but this one's handy because you can actually turn it over and then you've got that almost solid area. So... I would say that is the first area, first layer I've been put down. So now I'm going to go for a slightly darker shade. And this one is now warm grey 4. So it's the next, the next one up from the one I've just laid down there. So I'm going to start again at this corner. Using a light hand and circular motions again, I'm going to come down here. This is a very solid dark line just there before the upper and the lower highlight. There is actually a highlight under this line. I've just applied some white pencil. As you can see that now shows the highlight off nicely. Now 
Now I'm not pushing down hard because if I push down hard and I burnish, I'm not going to be able to blend it. And I want to add several more layers to this, a varying depth of colour. So I don't want it to burnish. So I'm only using very light pressure. With the pencils only just touching the paper. I'm also going to go over the logo here because this logo has the dark colour on it, it's not a light logo. But by just adding this dark colour, it will give it a richer tone than having the light shades underneath. Again, again, I'm going to come in with my colour shaper and I'm going to use the flat edge Now I'm actually using circular motions with the colour shaper because that gives a nice smooth effect If I just went up and down or side to side it may leave sharp edges and I don't want any sharp edges on this piece because when you look at colours of metal, they're all, unless it's rust, they're all very smooth and they just kind of melt from one colour to another. So if I was to have any sharp lines, it wouldn't look realistic. Now another thing to mention to you with these colour shapers is that they're very easy to clean. When you've used them and you've got a pencil on them, as you can see, I'm not sure if you can just make that out on there, it is now slightly dirty with the grey. If I wanted to move on to a, different, a completely different colour now, using the same colour shaper, what I would do is get a, a piece of kitchen towel with a little bit of water on it or a baby wipe um, preferably something that, that doesn't have alcohol in it because you don't want to damage the actual silicone of the colour shaper but if you get something like a wet wipe or a piece of kitchen towel that you've just made damp with water and just literally rub it off rub it across it and it will take the colour back off now alternatively, if you don't have something like that available to you, um, maybe you're out of the studio, I've actually found another way that you can clean them off. If you get your eraser, I'm going to use my Derwent eraser just to show you this. If you get your eraser, you can actually clean this off by rubbing your eraser over the colour shaper and that actually takes the colour off it itself so you don't have to have, can you see that that section there is actually particularly dirty if I do it down here you might be able to see it easier if I come down the colour shaper with my eraser like so You can see there that the colour has now gone and it's nice and clean again. So if you don't have water available to you, that is another way that you can actually clean your colour shaper. Which is quite handy because everybody that's, that's drawing will have 
some form of eraser with them. Now, the pencil sharpener that I received is this one. And it's a Derwent manual super point pencil sharpener. Now I am going to sharpen this pencil, obviously because I'm zooming in on my work you won't be able to see me actually sharpening, but that pencil there is not very sharp at the minute. But you can hear that it's manual. Now I never go too far with it. I always take it out check it and then if I need to make it slightly sharper then again then I will do. Now as you can see that has got a lovely sharp point on it now. That is an amazing pencil sharpener. And it was actually my friend Judith that made a video about it and that's where I found the information. Now so I'm now going to come along on here with this dark shade. This is now Warm Grey 6. When you're using a range of colours, for example the Warm Greys, the Cold Greys, you don't have to use every colour in the range. For example, I'm doing this particular piece of metal. And I am aiming for a very, very dark finish on most of the areas. But I'm not going to use every colour of the grey to get there. Because I don't honestly see the need. As long as I have variation of colour and I build it up slowly, I don't need to use every colour in the range of the, the warm or the cold greys. Now you can see that the cream is still resisting the darker colours which is what I want Before I move on with this, I want to give you a little hint. If you want your colours to be richer, add a brighter colour underneath the darker tones. Now, on this piece of metal that I'm currently working on, I can see on the reference photo that there seems to be a very slight greeny tinge to it. And although it's going to end up being a very, very dark black, I want to add the richness that the reference photo is showing. So before I actually add any more of this very dark grey, I'm going to add some of this green. Apologies if you can hear my puppy. Now I know you're going to think I'm crazy for adding this colour. But I promise you it will end up looking really good. Now it doesn't really matter whether I add it on top or underneath. Because it will all blend together nicely. I'm going to add a small bit over some of the cream. 
I don't want to, oh, for, oh. And as I was saying, the cream does resist colours. So I do need to use slightly more pressure to actually get it onto the cream than I have done to get it over the top of the brown. Like that. Now I'm going to blend that in because I want that to be blended in to the lighter brown underneath. I always start with my softest blender first. The good thing about these colour shapers is because uh, it's made of silicone, it doesn't actually remove the colour from the paper. The paper stumps that I use are absolutely fantastic, but they do take off some of the colour, which then means you have to go sanding them and usually apply more colour, and that can make the process last even longer. These move the colour around but don't actually remove very much of it from the piece itself. Now, I'm going to use this darker one just to make sure that there's no, I don't want any solid lines, I want it all to be nice and soft. Now I'm going to carry on with my darkest shade of the grey. Now there is a very definite, Not a straight line, but there's a very, very definite dark line right at the top there. So I'm going to work on that straight away. And I'm going to work just around this highlight. Like so. Now I'm going to carry on colouring the rest of the, the metal with this dark grey and then I'm going to use a small bit of black just for the, the darkest highlights and I will come back to you when that is completed. So as you can see now I've gone over this area of the metal with um, several layers of the green and all the different shades of the warm grey that I've used and also some black. And I've actually used my Prismacolor Cream and I've gone back over some of the areas that were slightly too dark and lightened them up a bit. And it's also given it a nice seamless smooth effect. So now I've finished this area, I'm going to actually move on to this top bit here. Now on this top area there's an awful lot of light hitting the metal. So that area is going to be very light. So I'm actually going to use the white pencil for this. And I am going to come along. Now there is a dark section in between what I've already done and the white, the area that's very, very light. So I'm leaving that section because I'll darken it up once I get to my dark pencils. But for now, I just want to use the white but I want to make sure that I keep a good eye on where I'm applying the white because I want the highlights to be exactly where they should be. There's no point in guessing this bit. It needs to be accurate. I want a 
finish the mix. There's a dark section just in there in the middle. So there we go. And there's also just a small highlight of that screw just underneath there. So now I've done that, I'm just going to do this, just this very top edge as well, whilst I've got the white pencil in my hand. So now I've done that, I am going to go in with the lightest shade of grey again, which is my warm grey 3. And there is a touch of the grey, just on the very, very edge. Like that. It just drags in ever so slightly. I want to be as accurate as possible with my drawings. And if something isn't quite right, then I delete it and start again. Erase it out and, and work on it again until it is right. And you can see at the minute, because I'm only using very light pressure with my grey, that white highlight that I've just laid down there isn't very bright. It will brighten up as I deepen the rest of the colours. It's only because it's the first layer. The darker, tiny bit of the background there that I haven't finished. There we go. The darker the colour that you lay down, the brighter your highlights get once you go around them. This is the section that I was talking about that's darker, that's in, that was in between the highlight and the dark bit that I'd finished. So I'll just go along that edge and apply this grey. Now, I want to Blend this just a small bit before I apply the next layer. I'll come in with my colour shapers. And you can see there's a small bit of the colour has just got onto this highlight. But when I go over it with my eraser, it brings the white up again really nicely. Now that wouldn't happen if I just put the grey straight down on the paper and hadn't Put the white down first but because the white's gone on first and then the grey's gone over the top and it's resisted a majority of the colour it actually brings the white up again really nicely there we go so i'm going to continue on this area and i'll do this area as well and then i'll come back to you as you can see i've carried on working along the rest of this section and I'm just doing a few final touches to the piece. Just 
there's a variation of colour on the metal on the sides because of shadows and highlights so I want to make sure that the variation is noticeable Just finishing off the last few tiny details, and then this little section here will be completed. And I can move on to the wheel. And there we go. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to see any more of my work, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest and Twitter just by searching for North Mayo Fine Arts. Thanks for watching.